Mr. Speaker, when I listened to the, state, the president, I got very worried because the state of the nation, the most important part of the state of a nation, is the economy. And the president was running away from the economy. A few days ago, the vice president also appeared at UPSA and jumped into a vision without talking about the economy. Mr. Speaker, if we don't survive, can we live for tomorrow? But Mr. Speaker, if you look at the aspect of the economy, it is just one page. And even that one page, it is nothing but news that should never come from a president. Mr. Speaker, the president indicated that there was unprecedented large number of bondholders who the government said, we cannot pay you your money. And those people agreed to, add, to take a haircut of 60 billion, and that is good news. Mr. Speaker, the President says that for the first time in almost a year, they managed to pay coupons, and that we should celebrate a government being able to pay coupons. Mr. Speaker, when we went to school, we were told that when government borrows, it is restricted. So paying your debt is just a matter of course. So how can that be good news, that a government now celebrates ability to pay coupons? Mr. Speaker, the center cannot hold. But Mr. Speaker, a year, some years ago, we were presented with a man that we were told is the economic waste case. Mr. Speaker, we were presented with a man that we were told he was the one with the magic wand. Mr. Speaker, today that man is not being described in terms of economics. He is now being described as a doctor of digitalization. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this man, we were told that when the lecturers in economics taught him in school, they all died and they didn't teach anybody again. So all the knowledge in economics is in that head called Dr. Mahamudu Baumia. Mr. Speaker, even that man that you said was the best in economics, he came to us and said that, look, even though I know economists, I need six strong men in economics to help me. So we recruited Dr. George Gideon Buako as a technical economic advisor to advise the best economists in the world. We pay him. We recruited Professor Joe Amuaku Tufo in his office to assist the best brain in economics as a technical advisor. We recruited Mr. Evron Rothschild Hughes to assist the best brain in economics as a technical advisor in economics. Ms. Dr. Kabiru Mahama, a technical advisor on economics to advise an economist. Mr. Speaker, Dr. Mutaka Alolo, a technical economics advisor to advise the best economists. And then Dr. Samuel Frimpong, six strong men, to assist the so-called best brain in economics to manage the economy. Mr. Speaker, this man mismanaged the economy, crashed the economy, and ran away to go and hide in Yahoo doing digitalization. Mr. Speaker, it is akin to appointing a scientist to be the headmaster of a science school. The science Headmaster tells you that I need six people who are good in, in science to come and teach my students. You recruit those people and send to the science teacher. The students come to write the exams and they fail. When you go to ask why the students are failing, you go and stand by the window and these science teachers are teaching history, geography, and literature. Dr. Mahabou Baume, you don't even have one technical advisor in, uh, in digitalization in your office. You yourself, you don't know digitalization. So how did you metamorphose from the best economist with all these technical advisors to be teaching history, geography, and literature as a scientist? Mr. Speaker, you are a lawyer. When you go to court and you see Dr. Matthew Poku Prep dressed in robes and says that he's a lawyer, will you hire him? <laughs> will you hire him? Mr. Speaker, this man, 
has damaged our country. No wonder today when they came here, they were not talking primary balance, because primary balance is there. Primary balance is about your ability to raise revenue to pay all expenditures, and then look at whether some will be left to pay your interest. As for you, you say you will even pay, you can't pay. So we don't discuss primary balance. Debt to GDP, we have stopped discussing, because we have killed the, the debt. The debt now is under surgical operation in IMF, uh, OCC, and all over the place. And they are looking for ways and means to give people haircuts abroad. Mr. Speaker, this economic wizard destroyed our country and saddled us with a cost of $62 billion that we need to fix this mess. No wonder he doesn't talk about economics again. But we will force him to discuss the economy. Mr. Speaker, the cost of fixing the mess of Baumier's economic management is that we are spending $3 billion from the IMF to fix this mess. So far, $1.2 billion of it has come. And the man who said that going to IMF is incompetent shamelessly collected it and he celebrated it. Mr. Speaker, the World Bank is giving us $1.5 billion to help fix the mess of Dr. Baumia. Mr. Speaker, domestic debt exchange, our pensioners and poor women in the market, that they took their money and gave them haircuts, are contributing $60 billion Ghana cities, $6 billion to fix the mess of Dr. Baumia. Mr. Speaker, international creditors, our bilateral friends, Germany, all those countries that used to help us. Commercial creditors, European holders that we went and collected their money and we thought it was free, and we came here and were celebrating with Kenke and Fish. They are all contributing $10.5 billion. It is in the IMF document. Go and read it. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the Bank of Ghana printed $8 billion, $8 billion Ghana series to help fix Baumia's men. It is in their audited account. Mr. Speaker, the taxes they brought here, all the taxes that they brought for additional revenue will cost the taxpayer over three years $33 billion, bringing the cost of Dr. Baumia's economic mess to $62 billion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, should this man be anywhere near the presidency? No. 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 Mr. Speaker, this excludes the people who, the contractors who have died whilst we have not paid them and they are waiting for their money. Mr. Speaker, this excludes the over 850,000 Ghanaians that the World Bank says Baumia has pushed them below the poverty line. Mr. Speaker, this excludes a third of employed people in Ghana who are holding vulnerable jobs because they are not too sure of the job the next day. Mr. Speaker, this excludes 20% of the unemployed would constitute the youth of our country and our future who are at the moment don't even have jobs. Mr. Speaker, Dr. Baumia is the biggest threat to the economy of our country and to the development and collective future of our, of our people.